On today's episode of Watch Jericho, we're back with Gabe, Saturn, Sky, and today we're going to try to make a charge. What is going on guys? I am Watch Jergo and like I said today we are back with the Sky and in the last episode we got this thing running and we were basically ready to take it out for a test drive and we found out it wasn't charging. The battery light was on. I thought it was a red herring. It wasn't. The battery was sitting at 11.72 volts with the engine idling which means clearly it's not charging. Clearly. We expect 14.4 as always and uh, instead we just had nothing there. Gabe's got a brand new alternator from O'Reilly's here. This had to be ordered in, so I wasn't there to pick it up, but that is the part number for the Saturn Sky Redline manual transmission. It's different for the automatic and it's different for the non-Redline. So Apparently, Gabe, so different that no one this side of Denver carries it. <laughs> there was one of those things in the Midwest and Denver apparently is gonna be the Midwest. So, so thanks for coming through Denver. Battery disconnected. And Gabe already pulled the charge pipes, obviously. Two clamps. Yep. Just about done there. And just after that. These clamps. <laughs> just throw it. Three clamps. We just three need clamps. To pop the belt loose and three bolts. We should have that thing out of there. One minute has elapsed. <laughs> Pretty much. We've got the connector off. No, like exactly. Really? And, just yeah. seriously. Wow, that's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there were two of us. So I got the connector no, and I pulled the battery cable. There's the nut for the battery cable. And Gabe had to pull off those three bolts. The alternator is ready to come out of this car. This is a little more difficult if the hood's in your way, but if it's not, ooh wee, what an easy job. As you can see. Yeah. Alternator coming out. So a minute 30. <laughs> About a minute 30. It they... should be for three bolts. Is that a OG? Flip it over. It's OG. Yep, it sure is. It's original in the car. Vallejo. Vallejo. I, I thought AC Delco did this. Oh, uh, I'm sure it's outsourced to everybody. Huh. Everybody that'll do it. Yep. They suggested we tap it with a hammer to make it work again. But... <laughs> like it's a starter? Yeah. I mean. Yep. Like the solenoid stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Once we got the old alternator off, I decided to run to O'Reilly's and do a quick spin on it just to see if they thought it was good or not. Obviously, they have the test bench that has a motor that spins the alternator and we will give you some answers real quick. So let's jump to that right now. Interesting. Shout out to O'Reilly's for the alternator testing. Link in the description below to this alternator. And once we did that, of course, you guys just saw it somehow passed. Now we don't know how that happened. I expected this alternator to have burned up. This is the battery connection to the alternator, but it turns out it's not a direct battery connection to the alternator. It is the worst design I've ever seen in my life. It goes to this black wire this black wire down there, and there's a fusible link in between the two. Now, I think that's because it had been replaced and there's a bunch of aftermarket tape in there, if you guys look, um, something that we didn't know about. I think it may, it may have been a bad repair. It may have been on the factory, but either way, what we thought was a ground strap actually was supposed to route to the starter and piggyback off of that. We did a lot of wire tracing and some continuity checks and imagine my surprise when I grabbed the battery positive connection to the alternator and touched it to the intake and it had continuity. That is the worst sign. It means that that stud on the alternator, the output stud was connected directly to the ground on the chassis. Now that in and of itself, I would have expected the voltage output from the alternator to blow up that fusible link, but it didn't. So we hooked it up to the starter where it belongs now and put the old alternator back in since the test showed it was all good. And Gabe is putting the last nut on there and we can start this thing up and hopefully it charges. Unbelievable. Anyone who makes one of the main battery connections for the car in black and it just looks like a ground. I mean, come on, there's, there's something wrong with that picture. That's for sure. Especially on a factory vehicle. Dishonor on you. That's dishonor right. On dishonor your family, on your entire on family. <laughs> SWAT came into my home, <laughs> disrespected <laughs> my whole family because I put a black wire on an alternator. Well, that's unbelievable. You should 
entirely. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you, you, should, if you yep. do that. Yep, you got to be disowned, removed from the Society of Engineers. Absolutely. Unbelievable. So anyway, a couple bolts left. We're starting this thing up. All right, time for the first test fire all back together again. Oh, you got the belt on? Yeah, of course I do. Did, <laughs> <laughs> I, thought, I thought you were messing with me there. All right, let's 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 put the belt back on. I told you I had the belt on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks yeah. like uh, nothing. We, yeah, it was always good to go. Always good to go. Yeah, all the time. We can finally drive this thing. Uh, now we just need to put this side panel back on here. So that's what we're gonna do. I've got it. I've got one bolt in it so far. The hood is back on. The headlights are reattached. We've got this thing buttoned up. All the bolts are back in it. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's just time to take it out for a test drive and wash it. Word. It's very dirty. It is a little dirty. Let's make sure this hood shuts right, but all the bolts are right back on their witness marks, so it sure should. Latch checks out. Let's check the other latch over here. It's reverse hoods. Always gotta double check your latches. Check our fitment. Looks better than the old fitment. It's not exactly tight, but it's a lot better than what was going on there. You make it fun of my body. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> we are good to go. Clock's wrong, man. Perfect time. I think that's the uh, pretty much the main part of your worries at this point. If that's all my worries. We're doing good. Turbo sounds. We heard some turbo noises. So 500 mile break in period is what they recommended on this engine. It has non-synthetic oil in it, which is something that we haven't ever bought, at least in the last. I mean, I do not buy dyno oil. It looks like there's still a little bit of blue smoke rolling out of the exhaust. But obviously the exhaust was full of oil. I mean, this thing fogged out the whole building in 10 seconds when we started it before. So all of the oil from the uh, failed turbo seals or the failed turbo um, oiling system basically went into the exhaust, coated it all. It's gonna be a long time driving this thing before it's completely clear. Yeah. It's kind of funny. There's an O'Reilly's delivery truck behind us. It's always obvious. It's a white Nissan, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's totally them. It had the antenna and they backed way off to avoid Gabe's smoke here. <laughs> Sorry, O'Reilly's. <laughs> it even smells like oil, but it, it really does. But I'd say I'm, I'm not worried. 15 more minutes, this thing will probably be completely clear. Yeah. We just got to set the clock. Which is great. I'm pretty happy about this because, you know, I was kind of concerned the O2 sensors would be like crazy bad coated, but they burned everything off too, so. We'll probably uh, scan it and watch the live data, but the O2 sensors do seem like they were good during the first run when we checked it. One sky red line back on the road. Excuse me while I kiss this sky. You're gonna have to ask 15,000 for this, like all the low mile ones that has a new engine. Oh, that's true. <laughs> that's true, and you know, big turbo, big all that stuff. Ooh, look behind. Yeah. So if I... Oh, when you get on it, you get some smoke. No, 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 I'm not even on it. I'm, I'm like... It's like... Bottoming like, out on yeah. fifth gear right now. Yeah, I saw it's lugging yeah. it really yeah. hard. So get on it a little bit. Let's see if we can... Ah, there's some smoke. James Bond smoke screening gauge. <laughs> a few more minutes of this. Oh, nice turn, nice turn. How fast? You're on like 40, 45, 50? Yeah. Speed limit, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're out in Mexico right now. I tried to make the Volt self-drive through that at 60 and it was not happy. Oh, temperature. Uh-oh. Well, spin it around. We'll check the cooling system again. Low coolant light came on while we were driving. I was a little concerned, but if you look at that, it's just, just below the full mark, so we're actually good to go. Gibbs buying another bottle of coolant. We're gonna dump that in right now, and that should put him back on the road. I was just talking about you buying coolant. <laughs> back on the road after a quick stop. On the road again. Started right back up. Yep, that's a good thing. The real Different question design. is, is the 3D printed cup holder still holding up? How does that work again? Yeah, it's supposed to just fall. There you there go. There it goes. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it looks like it's still good. Mostly good. Crazy, man. All those years. There you go. 3D printed cup holder. Magic. <laughs> and we made it back to the shop with the sky. It seems like it's running really well and the smoke is slowly decreasing. 
you got some more uh, some more driving to do. Also, I'm a little worried that there was so much oil in the exhaust packing it might catch on fire. So I'd just be ready to run if you see a, if you see flames. Gabe's taking this thing home right now. The sky's on fire. <laughs> yeah, this <laughs> literally. <laughs> <laughs> at least the sky's done it's out of the shop and gabe's ready to go play with it that is it for today guys thank you so much for watching don't forget to head on over to shop watchjerogo.com for cool shirts not like this and please like share subscribe do whatever you want to do and i will talk to you next time well have fun with this thing i will i, I really i really appreciate it man you, oh. you've been oh show super awesome so. we were just down to the deadline yeah yeah <laughs> the shop's gotta be empty now it's time to move the stuff not now for the stuff. Yeah. All right, let's see if it'll smoke. It looks cool inside, but I bet it looks even cooler outside. Not even a blip. One more project done and out of the shop. And I think the Mustang's leaving tonight too. So that's gonna get us much closer to our goal. We're going to talk about that shortly and then that's going to go away and we're going to be doing pretty well getting these cars out of the shop. I think we're also going to tear down Gabe's old engine. So let me know in the comments below if you want to see that. Obviously it was still running, but it, uh, it may have some internal issues after uh, what that turbo put it through. Tree trimmers are out here today. Look at this. Old Herzog. That's pretty cool. There are rails down the cars. He can slide back and forth from trees. Speaking of trains, huge shout out to that subscriber. I know a few of you guys run this line out here and you're always emailing me about the trains and one of them pulled through the crossing yesterday and ran the normal horns right up to the crossing and as soon as he crossed I heard the <laughs> that was hilarious never had my own custom train salute there so thanks that was kind of cool